Thank you, Heavenly Father. We just ask for your Holy Spirit upon us. Open our ears and soften our hearts to a message we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. A friend of mine was in front of me coming at church uh, one day. And the preacher, as they do, was standing at the door. And as always, uh, he was there ready to shake hands. He grabbed my uh, friend by the hand and, and pulled him to one side. The pastor said to him, you need to join the army of the Lord. My friend replied, I already am in the army of the Lord. The pastor questioned him, how come I don't see you except at Christmas and Easter? My friend whispered back, I'm in the secret service. <laughs> You know, there's a lot of folk that are in the secret service that come to church regularly. We seem to uh, put on that cloak of invisibility when we kind of walk out of here. We heard uh, in our readings about God's grace. And when we walk out of church, God's grace should shine out of us so that people see something different in us. But we put that cloak over it so nobody notices and yet you know, the book of Ephesians is, it, it is a is a marvelous book. it's a short book it's something that you could sit down and read at one sitting it's six chapters long and in a nutshell that's kind of what Ephesians is about is about being in church and being out in the world chapter uh, one to three uh, is about our relationship to God in Christ. So that's us working out where we are with Christ. And for a lot of us, that's a bit of a struggle. You know, we, we, all, we all at times are in different places. But it's work, you know, it's work in progress for, for many of us, working out where we are in the Lord. But we know we're there. It's just a question of where he wants us to be. Chapters 4 to 6 is about our relationship to each other in the Lord. That's not just us here in church. That's the world as well. You can't have one without the other. The first half of Ephesians is about salvation. What we are saved by. And we know that we are saved by grace, don't we? The second half is about what we are saved for. So, all of us, every single one of us, who have accepted Jesus Christ into our lives, there's a purpose for us. Not just, you know, in our job or in our retirement or in the yard doing the, you know, doing the weeding. There's a purpose. God has a purpose for each and every single one of us here. Do you know, the world kind of thinks we're saved by, by good deeds. But we heard Gene read from Ephesians, and uh, we're not saved by good deeds. Praise the Lord for that. There wouldn't be many of us sat here if we were. The church, though, many churches kind of uh, have a, a, a heresy that supports that. A lot of people say, well, you're a good person. You'll be okay. Scripture doesn't support that. The letter to Ephesians is a general letter in which it simply sets out a summary of Christian belief and behavior. So the first half tells us we are not saved by good works. We are saved for good works. There's a big difference there. We are saved for good works. The first half is about God's purpose and power and what he intends to do. The second half is about our walk with God in the world. Put it simply, the first half is about what we do here inside church, what we do each Sunday, what we do in the week in church, learning. 
learning to love each other. Not easy, is it? The second half is about outside. Now I realise there's a bit of an irony here that today was meant to be an outside service. <laughs> and the purpose of an outside service is it's a witness. So as people drive by, they can see us out there praising the Lord. Some people find it too public. And so traditionally, when we have an outside service, our numbers are fewer. Today I can understand it, why? <laughs> because of the heat, and that's why we are worshipping in here this morning. The chap uh, 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 called David Paulson, and he tells us that both of these things, being inside church and outside church, must be together. You can't have one without the other. If we separate it, it's not the gospel. You remember that, uh, that old Frank Sinatra song? Love and Marriage? Anyone remember that one? Love and Marriage, Love and Marriage. Go together like a horse and carriage. You can't have one without the other. It's the same for us. You can't have one without the other. Some people, I've shared this with you before, but it's worth sharing again. Uh, when back in the UK, someone uh, at the door said to me, uh, Colin, I got absolutely nothing out of that service this morning. And I said to him, you weren't meant to. You were meant to give. That's what we're here for. We don't come for ourselves. We are saved by God's grace. The other interesting thing too about Ephesians, when we're, as we're talking about worshipping, is that Ephesians is a template for a worship service. Um, praising, chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. And then onwards from 15, praying. And then onwards from verse 19, preaching. And then again from uh, chapter 3, verse 14, praying. And then chapter 3, verse 20, praising. It's kind of what we do, isn't it, here in church? Uh, uh, one of the, the, the readings that we had this morning, and uh, I'm not sure that we, 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 went, we read through it entirely this morning, but was about um, uh, Paul in the temple. Now, Paul was uh, arrested um, falsely on a false trumped-up charge, but he was arrested for bringing gen a Gentile into the temple. And you can't really, well, you probably can. Our church, churches today are kind of separated by the differences. We ought to celebrate what we have in common. But back in uh, Paul's day, if you brought a, a, a Gentile, a non-Jew, into the temple, it was punishable by death. And Paul was accused of bringing a, a, a Gentile into the temple. And interestingly, back in the 19th century, archaeologists who were excavating the site of the temple found a pillar with uh, this inscription: "No man of another no man of another nation is to enter within the fence and enclosure around the temple." And whoever is caught will have himself to blame, and his death ensues. So it was up there. Stay out. We don't want you here. It's, um, it's sad, um, but we, we all know it to be true, that churches aren't immune from arguments and divisions. Individuals hold grudges against each other. Invisible walls can exist between us. Part of uh, uh, chapter 2 in uh, Ephesians is about reconciliation. And it's something which we are called to do. Uh, General MacArthur said that a truce just says don't shoot for a while. 
churches aren't any good. You need to uh, recon be reconciled with one another. Billy Graham um, once said, the, uh, the number of problems in our world is alienation. Rich versus poor, black versus white, labor versus management, conservative versus liberal, east versus west. But Christ came in the world to bring about reconciliation and peace. And that's a difficult bit for us. I sound like a broken record, but we have to get out into the world and witness. Not about standing on the street corner preaching the gospel. But I want to challenge you to do one thing this week, just one. Because you don't have to, uh, you know, to, to tell people about what you do on a Sunday and what's so important in your life. You, you don't have to make, uh, make reasons and excuses to share that. Because God gives us the opportunities. And of course, with an opportunity, once it's gone, it's gone. It doesn't necessarily come back. So what I want you to do this week is be on the lookout for that opportunity that God is giving you to share your faith with somebody else. Because he will. You won't have to bring the subject up. You'll suddenly think, ah, what do I do? Do I keep my cloak of invisibility on, or do I take it off? And share what Jesus Christ has done in my life, and what Jesus Christ can do in yours. In Jesus' name. Amen.